with action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? Well, it's one that took place on the state plains of eastern New Mexico, where after the Lincoln County War, there were more gunslingers per ranch than cowboys. Jesse Chisholm's jingle bob spread ruled the Pecos country, but on the state plains, it was the Crossed Arrow Ranch. After a delivery of cattle in Texas, California and I headed back for the Bar 20. We planned to go as far as Albuquerque on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. At a good to our car had picked up a set of unusual guests. Sure, Hoppy, look at that pretty female up there. Ain't that uh, Princess Stuttgart, boss lady of the Crossed Arrow? Uh-huh, could be, California. She has a regular following. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, you mean them uh, hombres with her? Yeah. Reckon they're her guards. Folks say she's got more cows than Jesse Chisholm. And her land? <laughs> well, that runs from the Canadian River plumb down to Mexico. And not only that, she's supposed to be related to the king of, uh, uh, Frank of, uh, uh Fran... Uh... Fran Covia. But she doesn't look too happy about it. Uh-oh, one of her men is coming back here. Sorry, gents. Got to ask you to move you along to the other coach. The princess wants privacy. She, uh, what? The other car is full, stranger. There's no room. Make room. Much as we'd like to oblige the lady's whims, I don't think we'll stand all the way to Albuquerque. She ain't no lady. She's Princess Zelda Stuttgart. Well, I won't argue the point, but we're not... What do I have to do? Shoot you both and drag you out? (laughs) Hoppy, get him. Wild Bill Hickok without whiskers. Never mind my age, Pop. The name's Devlin. Heck, Devlin, late of uh, Lincoln. That's right. Now you're going to vamoose easy-like? No, we're not, Devlin. Some folks just don't hear good. Sorry. (laughs) So am I. You shouldn't flash guns on strangers. Uh, here, what's going on? What happened to Devlin? Oh, he just tried to get the draw on Hoppy and get slugged for his pain. What? You beat Devlin's guns with your fists? That's the size of it. Riff raff, ruffians. Fly and hit them. <laughs> well, after what they did to Devlin? And not me, Princess. I'm just your foreman, not a prize fighter. Devlin, get up. Strangers, didn't Devlin tell you I wanted privacy? Yeah, he told us, ma'am. Well? Go. Shoo. Scott. Devlin, get up. Hoppy, you tell this kid we ain't her servant. Kid. Kid, you dare call me. Oh, Devlin, get up. Oh, oh. oh he's going to make it. Oh, what hit me? You. Why, you low down. No. Oh. oh, no, ain't that plum awful. He tried to draw on Hoppy again. Devlin, how dare you let this brute strike you? Get up. Oh, let him stay down, ma'am. On his feet, he just gets into trouble. Wait. Wait, that face. I wonder. Lions, take a look at him. Is it possible we have found him? Note the strong Bulgarian jaw. The cold blue Bulgarian eyes. Uh, yeah. He does look a lot like those pictures. Turn around, mister. Your first name. What? Uh, now, wait. I... It's William, but what Turn a... around, I said. There. There, the light is better. Lions, it must be. We found him right under our noses. You found what? Who? You. You are Prince William of the royal family of Bergavia. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Meets His Match. Hoppy and California's train trip to Albuquerque is strangely interrupted by the fabulous Princess Iselda Stuttgart, young owner of the huge Crossed Arrow Ranch. She announces that Hoppy is really a prince. 
Stop, wait, hold up. Whoa! Shh, I will not hold up, whoa. I have positive information that the heir to the title, Prince of Bergavia, is here in New Mexico. You are that prince. You are the image of your grandfather, whose picture I have in my possession. Copy? Uh, you really... Oh, there? of course not. She's loco. Fair prince, will you join my company? I have much to say to you. Now, let's be calm. My name's Cassidy. I'm a cow puncher. I'm not a prince of Bergavia or any other place. Now, good day. But the family resemblance, it is unmistakable. You must be. Princess Zelda, understand me. I don't want a title. I just want to be plain hop along, Cassidy. You, you prefer horses to me? Me, the princess Zelda? Well, now that you put it that way. Well, so long, princess. <laughs> Hoppy, do we have to stay here in Albuquerque tonight? You know I just hate hotel rooms. Well, I'm not fond of myself, California. But I want to give that stone bruise on Topper's hoof another day's rest before I ride him. Well, all right. Uh, but I sure don't like the fact that the princess and her crew get off from here, too. That female's got some kind of ideas about your still. Uh-huh. I wonder why she took so much interest in me. My being a prince or not a prince wouldn't cause that kind of interest. And she said she'd been looking for me. Then you are Prince William. Uh, hail to your fair prince. I'll hail uh, you why you... <laughs> oh, you <laughs> want to wrestle, eh? I'll put a whole front you on you. Say the green lizard. What is this? Uh, uh-huh. Oh, who are you? I am Pasquale. Looking for a fight, Pasquale? Uh, join her. <laughs> oh, no, senores. No, no. Pasquale is a man of peace. I've not killed a man in uh, one, two, three... Uh, Oh, he's weak now. That's good for you, eh? Oh, see. Sometimes it's only one day. Always there is some hombre that wants to fight. Who Pasquale is, uh, what you say, the sheep. Goat. Uh, that's what I said. But I'm not come to talk about sheeps. I'm come to tell you the most gracious princess, Isalda, wants honor you with dinner tonight. Hoppy, I told you. Uh-huh. Uh, Pasquale, tell the princess no thanks. Is not so. You come. He's so. We don't come. It's too bad. Pascual gets so very mad. And when Pascual gets mad, all his vaqueros get mad too. You come. He's so. We come. Prince William, I am so delighted you decided to join us. Your invitation was hard to refuse. Dang near impossible. This is Papa Googie, my favorite uncle. Papa Googie is your uncle? Yeah, that is, I am called Papa Googie, but I am not Papa, but uncle. That is, they, Papa, call me. You understand, no? No. <laughs> That's the trouble with this country. No one can language to understand without I explain to myself what they are saying. You will have to excuse Papa Googie. He is newly arrived. But perhaps we should get down to business, Prince William. I don't suppose it'll do any good to tell you I'm not a prince. After the proof Devlin found in your saddlebags, not hardly. Proof? What are you talking about? The letters from your esteemed cousin, King of Bergavia. What? Uh, oh, now, Hoppy, Letters are addressed you, uh... to me? What? Well, that's ridiculous. They were addressed, dear cousin, naturally. But your possession of them, plus your family characteristics, is quite enough proof for me. <laughs> but I'm glad you're nice-looking. It makes it much easier. Look, this joke has gone far enough. I'm no prince, but I sure want some questions answered. Why the gunman to threaten us? Who planted letters in my saddlebag? Gunmen? <laughs> you mean Devlin and Pasquale? Why, ever since my father died a year ago, they have been perfect lambs around me. Especially Devlin. That's interesting, but a little hard to believe. This whole thing is getting silly. Silly? Money is silly never. If you will only stop being so impatient and cooperate, I can assure you a handsome reward, fair prince. Like what? A bullet in the back? Oh, my dear, no. Papa Googie and I have decided your share will be one million dollars, paid in gold. Hoppy, my ears is busted. Gosh, you should have heard what I thought I heard. I did. Uh, you did? Well, well, come on, then. She's as local as two ring-tailed buzzards in a barrel of white mule. Wait. 
You gentlemen should first take a peek at the doorway. Pasquale. Uh, devil. Yes, he's come with the bang bangs. What's the idea, Princess? Just that you aren't leaving, my dear Prince. I've no intentions of letting you escape and make me forfeit a fortune. Oh, lady, ain't you forgetting you already got a fortune? What's that got to do with it? I want more. Sorry, not even for a million dollars do I want to get tied up in this deal. But it is perfectly honest. I swear it is. Sure, sure. It's a Sunday school picnic where all is truth and light. That's why you got gunmen at the doors. Where's your foreman, Lyons? He's the only one not around. He upstairs searching our room? Lyons I sent home to take care of the ranch when Pasquale rode in. Please, this is very serious. And the offer of a million in gold stands. Devlin! Well, it can stand. Whoosh, the crazy is a prince man. Whoosh. Yes, princess. Is he going back to the ranch okay? He is not. He, he is proving to be stubborn. I didn't tell you before, but the reason I wanted him... Don't matter to me, princess. Whatever you do is right, you know that. Well, this is still going to come as a shock. I am sorry, but it means millions to me. Yes, I tell him. Why you stumble like a blushing maid, dearie? Well, uh, ha, 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 Papa Googie, I think the princess is in love. Cassidy! Prince, you are overstepping yourself. Devlin, you may as well know it. I was going to wait until we were home, but, well, the Prince Cassidy and I are going to be married. Now. But, wait a uh, minute. But, Zelda, you can't. He's a stranger. You just can't marry him. Please, stop all this babbling. Get me a minister, Zeblin, and hurry. Tell Pasquale to leave his men around the hotel and at the stable where their horses are. I don't want them to escape. Bring the minister to my room. We'll hold the ceremonies there. Papa, my arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a wedding for a princess. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, this is impossible. It's, it's local. I won't do it. I will not. I... And to you, Iselda Marguerite Stuttgart, take this man, William Cassidy, to be your lawful wedded husband? I... I do. Do you, William Cassidy, take this woman, Iselda Marguerite Stuttgart, to be your lawful wedded wife? No. Had a boy, Hoppy. Sure he does, Preach. In five seconds, you're going to be married to the deadest bachelor in New Mexico, Cassidy. Now, do you answer right, or does this gun in your ribs go off? Shoot and be hanged. Better at least think of your partner... He gets it, too, if you don't say them words. And pronto. Uh, uh, this is highly irregular. Uh, perhaps... Uh, uh, Hoppy, don't mind me. Don't do it. Shut up. Well, Cassidy? I'll restate the question. And do you, William Cassidy, take this woman, his elder Margaret Stuttgart, to be your lawful wedded wife? Uh, I do. Then I now pronounce you man and wife. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Meets His Match. On the way back to the Bar 20, Hoppy is taken to be Prince William of Bergavia by Princess Iselda Stuttgart, owner of the huge crossed arrow ranch. Further proof was found planted in Hoppy's saddlebags, whereupon the Princess Iselda promptly offered him a million dollars in gold to cooperate. Hoppy refused. But under threat of death to California, he gives in and finds himself now the husband of Princess Iselda. It is an unhappy newlywed that now rides to the crossed arrow. Gee, Hoppy, uh, oh, excuse me, Prince Hoppy, <laughs> uh, this ain't so bad. Now we own half of the crossed arrow. You're rich. Yeah. My husband, we can't here for tonight. I'm afraid your night will be slightly uncomfortable. I shall have to have you tied up and guarded. Will you mind so terribly? <laughs> mind? Princess, I'll be delighted. Hoppy, this seems like a darn uncomfortable way to treat a prince and his partner. Uh, tell him to let us loose. These ropes hurt. <laughs> Not on your life. I know when I'm well off. Besides, as long as they're not watching us, we may be able to escape. Not watching? Hoppy, ain't you forgetting Mr. Heck Devlin is sitting there a glaring at us? Hardly. I'm depending on him. You're... Huh? Sure. Hey, psst. 
Devlin. What is it? Come on over. Yeah? What do you want? I figure it's what you want, Devlin. You're in love with the princess, aren't you? I mean, very funny. Suppose I am. You'd like to see us out of the way, then. If you were to untie our ropes and look the other way, I can promise you I'd ride out of her life for good. All right, I'll do it. But by heaven, you'd better be right. Here, I'll cut your ropes. There. That does it. Ah, thanks, Devlin. We'll never forget this. Wait. There's one thing about this you should know. Hoppy, Basswell's I... getting up. Sorry, Devlin. No time for it now. Come on, California. Good luck. Hey, what is this? The horses don't wake the saddle. Stop. Devlin, shoot. We must stop them. Come on, Devlin. Hoppy, that sure was a narrow escape. My legs is nearly busted from hugging this slick-sided critter. <laughs> well, it's daylight. I guess we can take a chance now begin to circle around as soon as we get through this draw. Yeah, you mean we've been traveling away from the bar, Twenty? Yeah, we had to lose Pasquale and his men. Ah, but we're free now. They'll never catch us. Hoppy, there's a man above us in the sides of the draw. Freeze and pull up those horses. It's lions. Welcome to the Crossed Arrow. <laughs> well, you're home, Prince. So you caught us. How'd you know we'd escape? I didn't. The princess sent a fast rider ahead of the main party with the news about your marriage. I was heading out to meet him when you come riding along. Darn lucky we didn't have no guns. You wouldn't have took her so easy. <laughs> I don't doubt it. You two have plenty of nerve. Well, here's where you stay. Uh, thanks a lot. Nothing like a dirty storehouse for comfort. You know, I can't figure you out, Cassidy. Why are you so set against getting a free million? Plus the prettiest young gal in the territory for a wife. You wouldn't understand, Lion. Well, you're nuts, Cassidy. This deal is nothing but good for you. Maybe I don't like being framed or forced into things. And, mister, I am warning you. If I don't get some satisfaction soon, I'm going to take you and this spread apart piece by piece, guns or no guns. Lines, you better get and get fast. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, yes, perhaps you're right. <clears throat> Hoppy, don't scare me like that. I thought you was going to jump him for sure, gun and all. I was. And next time, maybe I will. Yeah. Next time he comes in that door, I'm going to get the truth out of him if I had to swallow six slugs to do it. Jump him, right? Yeah. yeah. Shh. He's opening the door. Help! Help! Murder! Help! Papa Googie. Uh, we, we thought it was a lion. Well, maybe it's just as well. You ought to know some answers, Papa Googie. Start talking. Talking? Shh, I'm being dead to kill. Only once I am talking. The poor prince, you are no gentleman. Never mind that. Tell me what this is all about, or I'll... Wait, wait. Shh. That is, I am here, why? Go on, and make it short. It is short. It is that my niece, your wife, she is nearly 21 age of years. Well, what's that got to do with Shh, this? Please, please, I am telling. I learned in Francovia a few months ago that the royal treasury voted my niece a dowry of 600 million pasitas. I hasten here to come. 600 million? Uh, uh, how much is that in American dinero? Uh, dinero? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In American, it is five million dollars. You mean she gets five million dollars when she gets married? Well, it is supposedly her husband that money he receives. Hoppy, that's you. You get five million now. It's not, not so, not quite. My niece feels that uh, one is a fair share to you. One four, she will keep for herself. But why me? Why was I picked? And what's all this business about my being a prince? Ah, but you are. That is why you are picked. According to ancient custom, to receive her dowry, the princess of Francovia must marry before she is 21 and enter the royal family of Bukavia. You are the last line of that member. But those letters were fakes. I'm not the prince. Papa Googie, tell me, what happens as a result of the marriage? Nothing is happening. You and my niece go to Francovia, show that you are married, which is 600 million for Cetus. So that's it. We have to go and leave the ranch. Papa Googie, take us to the princess at once. Uh, oh, should you not make trouble, Plenty? We won't, but someone else may. Come on, I'm going to bust a frame up wide open. (laughs) 
And that's the story, Princess. Those letters were made up beforehand, and as soon as you found someone who looked the part, they were planted to make sure you were taken in. You mean they are forgeries? But, Papa Googie, you said the prince was here in New Mexico. Yes, many are men in New Mexico. He is here. But where? Prince, that is Mr. Cassidy, that is husband. Why was this done? Why were the letters planted? To make sure you married the supposed prince and left for Francovia. This Pasquale is a big-time outlaw. And running the southern half of your spread, he could clean you out. So, it's Pasquale that is full of yours. Now, stand very still or I shoot the ears off. Yeah, I accuse you, Pasquale. You tried to get half the cross there by winning the princess in marriage. But Devlin was the better man. She fell for him. And he was too dangerous for you to try and brace, so you framed me. But that's ridiculous. Pasquale didn't even know about my dowry and its conditions. It's true. How do you explain that, Senor Prince? Simple. The same way I explain how the letters were planted in my saddlebags before you arrived in Albuquerque. You weren't the brains of this plot. Only the guns and muscle. Yes, but if he is not, who is? The one man who had to know what was planned. The man who was to be left in charge of the ranch. Lyons. He knew about it. I told him. Check. Your foreman, Lyons. He and Pasquale cooked up the deal together. With you, your husband, and Papa Googie gone, they would have stolen every head of stock you have. The biggest wrestling scheme on record. Ah, so this is the story. You can prove this thing? <laughs> Naturally. Lyons confessed fast when he thought I was going to, well, persuade him. California's guarding him now. I see. He's playing you for a hard man, senor. And you know the cards when you see them. You pick bad partners, Pasquale. Lyons showed the white feather the first time we met. He talked all right. Talked you right in the prison. Isn't that so? Come here, senor. Quickly, in front of me. Wait a minute. Now, now, you will act as shield. You'll be very careful as we move. Don't, Pasquale. It's not his fault. If I hadn't been such a greedy little fool, I'd never have married him. Listen, Thor, not your fault, she says. You're the one thing that we don't think of. An honest man. Oh, he's fully. Pasquale, you can't get away. Devlin will blow Devlin, bah. You're a very smart man. It's too bad you will now be very dead one, too. That is as far enough. Now I make a widow of your lovely wife. Pasquale! Darren! Stand still, Cassidy. You are my shield, remember? Drop those guns, Pasquale. I'm coming for you. Come along. I am willing. You can kill Cassidy for me. Get back, Devlin. He'll kill you. Get back. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Cassidy, you all right? Sure, but Pasquale's mighty dead, I'm afraid. That was nice shooting. Hey, you were hit. I just winged my arm. You acted quick falling like that. Gave me just the second I needed. Your men got Pasquale's vicaros in hand? Like a bunch of lambs. There won't be any trouble without Pasquale to lead them. And a few of my men that were for lions have left for cooler climates. <laughs> that reminds me. I had to go tell Lyons that Pasquale confessed everything. But I was listening outside. You told Pasquale that Lyons had done the confessing. I didn't exactly tell you the truth. Pasquale knew Lyons was a coward. He had to believe me. Oh, Devlin, Devlin, you're wounded. Oh, it's all my fault. I, I feel like such a little fool. You sure acted the part, honey. But you won't anymore. You're going to be a lady if it kills you. Well, I was grateful. But if you're going to act so impertinent, Mr. Devlin, I'll... You'll shut up first thing. And come here. Oh, yes. Yes. Hmm. What a spot for a husband. Oh, oh, I forgot. I can't kiss you. I'm his wife. Shut up and pucker up. That minister was a phony. I hired him to fake the marriage. He's really Albuquerque's undertaker. Undertaker? undertaker. I had to, hmm. honey. If I tried to stop you from marrying Cassidy, you were just stubborn enough to fire me and really get hitched. You ain't marrying nobody but me, savvy? I savvy, boss. Cassidy, I, uh, I'd admire it if you'd stand up for me. Ha, 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 stand up for you? Man, I'm going to give the bride away. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hoppy's royal welcome turned into a not-so-welcome brush with death. 
And it didn't take long to prove that Hoppy hadn't met his match. Hoppy and California ride into another exciting adventure when they meet up with a girl gunfighter and Indians on the warpath and discover that Apaches don't need guns. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr., Hoppy Meets His Match was written by Herb Purdom with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.